hey and welcome. Today we will talk about deep fakes. This is not actually me talking, it is generated speech. Sounds like me though, right? And it does sound kind of like me, so I don't know if this is more scary to you or more exciting, but as Computer Mr. I just mentioned, we will talk about deep fakes today. So let's get started. So deep fakes are audio or video files where someone's face, their voice or their gestures are being mimicked and as you can understand from the name, they're created using deep learning techniques. So before we go further, if you want to learn more about deep learning, you don't really know how it works under the hood and you want to demystify it for yourself, you should definitely go check out my course Deep Learning 101 with Python and Keras. I will leave the link for you in the description below. So I created my voice that I showed you in the beginning of this video using an app called Descript and they have a feature called Overdub where you can upload a sample of your voice and then they will train your or fine tune their model to create a voice that is very similar to yours. So I trained mine with only 10 minutes of audio recordings of my voice but you can do it for longer then you will get a bit more of a natural sounding voice and not as robotic as the one that I showed you. But this is not the only app where you can do this. There are many apps in the App Store that you can download immediately and start using in five minutes. All you need is to choose a video, let's say like a famous video from Mission Impossible and put a photo of yourself, just one photo, and you will be able to get your face on Tom Cruise where he's like running and jumping around. Or I'm sure you've seen some videos online, especially on TikTok, where there are deep fakes of famous people or political leaders around the world where they're doing famous TikTok dances or just doing things that are ridiculous. So generally, this is mostly for fun, but of course there are some other uses of deep fakes and also some dangers of it. But before we go into the benefits or dangers of deepfakes, let's learn how they actually work. So of course the companies who generate these apps don't really want to share with us how they achieve these good results. But as far as we know, there are two types of algorithms that based on the deep learning uh, region of AI that help us create these kind of video or audio files. One of them are called generative adversarial networks and autoencoders. So first, let's talk about autoencoders. Autoencoders have this interesting architecture where it looks like there are two triangles merged together at the head. And what happens is the input and the output of autoencoders are the same. The goal of this network is to take some sort of image, compress it, and then decompress it to look as close to the input image as possible. So turns out autoencoders are actually quite good to understand the essence of some sort of media. So what you can do to create deepfakes with autoencoders is to learn the essence of a certain image and then map that essence to the target video. And then you have generative adversarial networks or GANs for short. What you have with guns is that you have two networks competing against each other. I know it sounds weird, but it's actually a really good idea. Generative Network's goal is to create a realistic data sample. And the Discriminative Network's goal is to understand if the input that is given to it is faked, so generated by the generative, or is a real sample. So basically, as you train this network more and more, the generative network gets better and better at creating realistic samples, and discriminative network gets better and better at catching the fake samples. And this architecture is being used a lot to create realistic data from scratch. But if you want to learn more about generative adversarial networks, let me know in the comment section. Or if you also want to learn more about autoencoders, and I will make a separate video about those. So even though these are quite cool and they're like the latest technologies in deep learning, sometimes it's a little bit confusing to understand, okay, but what is the end goal? What is the benefit? So here are some use cases where deep fakes could be useful. So the first one is, for example, if you're a podcaster and you recorded your audio and you want to do some changes, but you know, re-recording it would be a lot of work. There is also educational use cases where you get to use old historical figures or famous people or animated figures that will help children learn better using their deep fakes teaching them something. Or there was a project called Deep Empathy by MIT and UNICEF to show how modern cities in the West right now 
would look like if they were at war to kind of help people empathize better for people who are refugees in their country because they ran away from war. And there are many other cases that you can make where, for example, an activist needs anonymity or for even CGI effects for movies or maybe even translating a famous person's message to many different languages. Of course, there are some dangers on top of the benefits of the fakes. For example, you can change parts of someone's speech to mean something that they didn't actually say. Let me show you how that can be done on Descript. So let's try this. I will record something and then I'll change it to mean something else. The thing that I love the most in the world are dogs. All right, so it's recorded. I will just change this into something else. Yeah, let's listen to it again now. The thing that I hate the most in the world are dogs. And there are many other ways how this technology can be abused, like creating or distributing this information, manufacturing evidence, or stealing someone's identity using their voice. But luckily for us, there is already some effort going into detecting deep fakes. Of course, many of the created audio or video files cannot really pass as real when you put it in front of an expert right now. But after a while, we might start seeing it so often that we probably will need a structured way of dealing with deep fakes and labeling them as fake. But for now, luckily, we don't really have to worry about it too much. Deep fakes are still kind of like a fun way and recently turned into a useful way of creating audio or video that can really closely mimic real audio or video. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, if deep learning still feels like this gigantic mystical monster for you, go take a look at my course Deep Learning 101. I'm sure it can be helpful to you. I would also love to hear your opinions about deep fakes in the comment section below. What do you think? Are they positive or negative developments of today? But for now, have a nice day and I will see you in the next video.